All right, we're here today uh, in Governor Mifflin uh, working with our teachers uh, around the use of technology to enhance instruction and accelerate learning. And uh, we're fortunate to have three of you guys join us uh, in addition to the teachers that are sharing their practices with our teachers. It was great to have, it's great to have the three of you here uh, working with our teachers. Uh, Rich Kiker, you know, Rick Laffey and Chris McCaffrey, we've known you guys for a number of years and learned a great deal from you. Uh, and how uh, some really good practices in integrating technology in the classroom. So, so thanks for being here uh, today and for uh, sharing your work and, and some comments uh, that you might have relative to some questions we have moving forward. Um, so the first, first thing, uh, generally speaking, uh, you guys have spent a lot of time not only working with districts locally, but in the state and in the larger region, uh, other states, uh, other parts of the country. So generally speaking, what are, what are you seeing in the K-12 space around this use of technology in classrooms? One idea I can share is that Google Partner now, spending so much time in schools, mostly on the East Coast, but nat nation nationwide, is this idea, I hear a lot of schools talking about readiness and what does that look like for their students moving forward. This big concern over, we're sending kids into a world that's ever-changing and less important to give them fixed assets or fixed competencies. I hear a lot of uh, school leaders talking about the idea, how do we give them flexible competencies? Because we don't know what they're going to be doing in 10 years, and it's likely that they're going to change roles five to 10 times, who knows how many times throughout their life. So this idea that a complete set of literacies, from digital to traditional literacies, but the idea that they're ready to go in, prepared with a base skill set and a base readiness to succeed at whatever they do. So I hear a lot of that idea, and it ties in wonderfully with what you're doing here at Governor Mifflin, this general idea that we're starting with digital literacy, we're not afraid to fail, we're moving forward, and we're going to do what's right for kids. So I think if I identify one topic that I'm hearing commonly everywhere is readiness and what that looks like. And so really it's almost not uh, really a technology conversation, True. but the technology is really just more the vehicle in which we're, we're giving students these opportunities to develop those competencies. It's actually, we, right. we talk about this idea a lot, right? Technology is one conduit to get to those competencies. It's one method, uh, but we don't want to throw all the good things we've always done in education out the door. Yeah. We want to you know, partner them together and let kids thrive really comes down to choice and outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. do, do you want to make a diorama or do you want to make a Powtoon video? Right. The choice should be yours. Right, yeah, good point. Chris? And I, I think uh, adding on to that, he talked about how leadership, I think it's been really important what I've been seeing with teachers is the leadership of the, the school district or the region is just letting the teachers be comfortable with where they are but yet not be satisfied with where they are and, and saying that, hey, we do need to improve because there are a ton of tools out there that we need to start to learn how to leverage and let students learn how to fail and recover from, reflect from, and move on. Um, those districts that are moving forward quickly are the ones that are being support, supported by resources, whether it's professional development or the network working, Wi-Fi, but also the, the encouragement to go ahead and try it um, because they're under a lot of pressure. Um, all across K to 12 and producing achievement scores and things like that. But at the same time, we're adding a whole new set of tools to their, their tool belt. And if they're not comfortable with those tools and failing with those tools, um, you can squelch that, that innovation that we really want to see in the classroom. Yeah, great. How about share, with, uh, share with us specifically uh, in your experiences. You're in a lot of different classrooms. You're working with a lot of teachers, a lot of administrators. What would you say would be a, a one example of a practice that you've seen either in a teacher's classroom, in a school, or a larger district that's worth uh, learning from? One of, the things, one of the things I've been noticing a lot of and what technology affords a teacher and students is the ability to really communicate outside the walls. So you can break down the classroom, break down the school, and give kids an opportunity to reach out with someone in another country, in another state, even right next to their school district, just to get different perspectives and different ideas. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of collaborations going on. One I wanted to highlight was a second grade class that we have is communicating with a seventh grade class in New Jersey. And what that gives them the ability is to have the seventh graders almost be the experts. So the second graders come up with questions, they talk back and forth on a Google Hangout or whatever technology tool they want to have. And then the seventh graders from there get the opportunity to create a presentation and teach the second graders. Mm -hmm. So it really works on that critical thinking and communication mm -hmm. skills, mm -hmm. you know, tying into what Rich and Chris both said earlier about that ability to transform what teachers did so well, but now bringing in all these other perspectives. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, and I can add on to that. And, um, you know, everyone talks about flipping and blending the classroom and what that actually looks like. We have a teacher really doing some cool stuff where 
Well, you know, he kind of does a screencast or videotapes his, uh, his lesson and his content, and then the students get to watch that at home, and they come in and he gets some analytics on, on a Google form or a, a survey or something to say that this kid understands the concept, this kid doesn't. So he really can personalize that learning to the student, allowing the students who are maybe high flyers to push beyond what he needs to cover and allow those other students who need him to really use him as a resource. He's not in that, that typical direct instruction where you're kind of holding back your high flyers, pulling up the bottom people and teaching to the middle, he can really personalize that instruction and be used in a better manner as a resource, just like we use the internet as a resource, now the teacher becomes a resource, just like that textbook's right. a resource, right. um, but it really helps differentiate that instruction yeah, right. really easily. Right, so accelerate, when you talk about accelerating that learning, it's also just extending that learning beyond the walls, yep. uh, is what I'm hearing from both of you. Yeah. So last question I have is, uh, what would be a recommendation that you would have for us uh, at Governor Mifflin, whether it be for me, whether it be for our larger staff, our community? Um, you know, what would be an important uh, recommendation that, that you uh, uh, would provide us uh, in our planning and our work going forward? I, I would say don't be afraid of failure. You know, be willing to go after it, to try things. Um, keeping in mind, you know, the students are what we're trying to, to, to help and benefit. So mm -hmm. anything we can do to move forward to help them, not being afraid of failure. Mm -hmm. And with that, understanding that we can learn from them. Mm -hmm. We're not, we don't know all the answers. Mm -hmm. So learn from the kids, embrace the kids' knowledge, mm -hmm. and, you know, everyone learning together to get better. Great. I'll actually compare it to something that you said this morning to your, to your staff here. You said, this works a little bit messy, and it's, go it's going to be. Uh, and that's okay because the most important thing for districts to do right now is to move fast. Not get lost in the bureaucracy of what is this and what is this and do we have every policy in place, but focus on what the students need, drive towards that, get there, and iterate the process over time. You always look to improve, but at the rate the technology is evolving, you have to start now and you have to move fast to get there. And I think that's what our students deserve, and I think it's what all of our schools can do uh, under the right conditions, and I think the time is now, so move yeah. fast. Great. Well, again, guys, thanks for being here today. I know uh, the next couple weeks we're going to be doing some uh, Google Boot Camp where we have over 60 teachers signed up to come over two Saturdays uh, to continue this work and this learning moving forward. And I, and I thank you guys for helping to partner with us to, to make some of these things happen and, and move fast because I know our, our teachers are, are excited and there's some great momentum here moving forward. Thanks for having